Hello everyone, I'm Dee Gordon and I write local history books. Essex, that's interesting to me. South End on Sea, where I live, interesting to me. And the East End of London, which is where I was born and brought up. And that's the local history area I cover. And at the moment, uh, I'm in sunny South End on Sea. Not always sunny like everywhere else, but today is a beautiful day and we're in one of the most beautiful spots in South End on Sea, which are the cliff top gardens. And of course you've got a brilliant view of the Thames estuary and across to the pier. The pier is significant to South End because it's the longest leisure pier in the world. It's one and a third miles. It didn't start off that way. It started off quite a short pier so that you could ferry people who were literally coming off the ferries. You could, the men could lift the women onto their shoulders and carry them to shore so that their skirts didn't get wet. Um, but it's been extended over the years so you didn't have to do that anymore and they could literally just walk along the pier, making life a lot easier. One of many books I have written is called Not a Guide to South End and this is trivia based. So this is lots of facts and figures about South End including facts and figures about the pier. John Betjeman, he another famous name, he features in the trivia book because to him South End is the pier and I think John Betjeman was probably right. Other things that interest me apart from places are people and in the little book of Essex which does feature South End of course as well as plenty of other towns in Essex um, I wrote briefly about William Bradley and William Bradley is associated with the pier because he was a lightkeeper when there was a lighthouse at the end of the pier in the early days and he then became the first coxswain of the first lifeboat he lived at the end of the pier. The town is twinned with Sopot in Poland, and Sopot has something in common with South End. It has the longest pier in the Baltic. So that's one of the many reasons why, why the twinning has occurred. The Royal Hotel features prominently in lots of local history books, including my own. It was where Emma Hamilton gave a ball for Nelson, and the terrace itself is where Princess Caroline came. It's very well documented on the plaques around here for people that are interested, um, but it does feature in, in several of my books. In, in this book, People Who Mattered, one of the characters in this book, not so well known, lived in a house that's now been demolished and replaced by this shopping complex. His name was Warwick Deeping, and in the 20s and 30s he had 60 bestsellers, and so he was a prolific author. Um, he lived also at one time in Royal Terrace himself, they moved along the road here. And one of his, um, well more than one of his books were filmed, one of them was a silent film. And then a bit later on uh, there was a film called Sorrel and Son from a book of the same name. And that was also made into a television series, so he did very well as a, as a writer. The hotel that I'm approaching now, uh, the Parking Palace, now the history of that, it was built as the Metropole Hotel and then it was during the First World War it was taken over um, as a hospital for the troops and it was known as Queen Mary's Hospital um, but it hasn't really changed very much at all over that hundred plus years it's obviously a hotel again now um, with a casino and all the accoutrements that go with that kind of thing um, but that really hasn't changed very much in the last hundred plus years and the Royal Hotel, which predates it significantly to around the 1790s, then that is pretty well preserved. And the only thing that's been added since the Royal Hotel was built are the balconies along Royal Terrace. So the terrace and the hotel were all built around the same time. So South End at War, obviously it features in that. Um, when it comes to ghosts in haunted South End, the Royal Hotel, is famously haunted. The Parking Palace, not so much. And when it comes to secrets, the secret history of South End is a lot to do with things like tunnels. There used to be tunnels linking the Royal Hotel to stores underneath here. And that was reputed to be one way that Nelson could have access to Lady Hamilton without being too obvious. But there are lots of other secrets in store in this particular area. When I wrote about crime in South End on Sea historically, not modern crime, but it's small hotels where a few murders were committed 
um, in the 20s and 30s. And there was also one murder on the beach along here. Adventure Island, um, this dates back to the 50s to probably just before the war as well. It wasn't as big as the Kozel was, which we'll look at, but Adventure Island these days is the biggest amusement park in Essex. And um, again, if, it's, if, it's, if you're talking about tourists and you're talking about visitors, apart from the history, then Southend really has got it all. And here we are at the iconic Kurzel, or what remains of the iconic Kurzel. Uh, the original Kurzel was built in 1901. It was the first theme park, the first amusement park in the world, predating Coney Island. And we'll have a little look inside, but you'll see there's very little remaining. This features in different ways in my book. It features quite prominently in South End memories because this is about the heyday of South End, the 50s and the 60s, when you had all the day trippers and when it was even busier than it is today. And the 50s and 60s were the heyday of the Kurzel. It was when you had amusements, you had sideshows, and inside at the back you had an enormous amusement park with lots of rides much bigger than adventure island which we have today the modern version but when i wrote essex land girls i actually found one lady who'd work when they were making uniforms as part part of the curse will close down in the second world war and uniforms were made and she used to put little notes in the pockets of the uniform um, to give the soldiers a little bit of encouragement from home. Um, but then she decided to join the land army. She thought that was a better bet, really. More, a more useful service, if you like. Infamous Essex women that I wrote about. Um, there's one woman in here who was executed in 1923, Edith Thompson. She's actually from Ilford. Um, but she came here in 1916 during the war because people did come during the First World War. It, it was as if the war wasn't happening. And she came here on honeymoon. Um, even though people, Zeppelins were dropping bombs, people were being killed, but she wasn't the only one to come here. And she settled here for a while and then she was executed after her husband was killed by her, by her lover. So Edith Thompson is amongst the women who have some sort of connection to the to the Kurzel. In Essex's own Helen Mirren features, and most people I think, certainly locally, would know that Helen Mirren started as a hustler for the Kurzel, calling people in to get extra custom. So as you can see at least we've managed to preserve some of the architecture, internally at least. Um, but that's the end of this little mini tour of South End on Sea and of my books, which I hope you will all enjoy. David Fox Productions.